Varenicline is a partial nicotine receptor agonist. It stimulates nicotine receptors and it relieves withdrawal symptoms and decreases rewards from smoking. Thus, it's used for smoking cessation. It's marketed as Shampix in Europe and Shantix in the US. It's a fairly new drug that was, was introduced on the market in 2006 and sales have increased quite rapidly. However, there has been some safety concerns regarding potential side effects of Renaclin and there have been reports on, for instance, suicidal behavior, depression, psychosis, transport accidents and also violence. So far, the research on the effects of Renaclin has been quite limited. The aims of this study were to examine the association between varenicline and incidence of new psychiatric conditions, suicidal behavior, suspected and convicted crimes, transport accidents, and finally suspected and convicted traffic offenses. In our study, we used a large population-based cohort that included over 7.8 million individuals who were 15 years or older and were living in Sweden. Among those, almost 70,000 individuals were prescribed varenicline during follow-up. So we followed all individuals from November in 2006, when varenicline was introduced in Sweden, to the end of 2009. This was a large register-based study, so for each individual we linked several high-quality registers with national coverage that included information on a wide range of potential adverse effects. For this study, we used two different designs. First, we used a between-person Cox proportional hazards regression. With the between-person design, we compared individuals who had taken varenicin to all other individuals who had not taken the medication to examine if individuals on varenicline presented higher hazards of the adverse outcomes. We also adjusted our analysis for sex and age, which are known confounders. The problem with this design though, is that there may be additional confounders that we cannot adjust for, either because we don't know what they are or we may know, but lack documented information on them. And a confounder is a factor that correlates with both the medication and the adverse outcome. So the association that we see between the medication and the outcome may be a spurious one that is in fact caused by the confounder. We then used a within-person Cox proportional hazards regression. And with this design, instead of comparing different individuals to each other, we compared each individual to him or herself. So, we compared periods when the individual was taking varenicline to periods when he or she was not taking varenicline to see if rates of the adverse outcome differed between medicated and non-medicated periods. And by doing this, we can adjust for confounding by indication and all confounders that are constant within a person, like genetic factors, all factors up to the start of follow-up, and factors that remain constant during follow-up. And now the results. We could see that individuals on varenicline presented higher rates of almost all outcomes except traffic related outcomes. First, we carried out the between person analysis and we could see that individuals who were taking varenicline presented significantly higher hazards of new psychiatric conditions, suicidal behavior and suspected and convicted crimes as compared to the rest of the population. Then we carried out the within-person analysis, where we compared periods of treatment to periods of non-treatment within the same person. Now we found no associations with suicidal behavior, suspected and convicted crimes, transport accidents, and suspected and convicted traffic offenses. However, we still found an association with new psychiatric conditions, although this hazard was substantially attenuated. We then carried out further examinations of these associations and analyzed psychosis, depression and anxiety conditions separately. We found no associations between varenicline and psychosis. We did find a slightly increased risk for depression and anxiety conditions, so we examined this further to see if this association could be confounded by pre-existing psychiatric disorders among those taking varenicline. We divided individuals into two groups, 
those with a pre-existing psychiatric diagnosis and those without. We then carried out our analysis in these two groups separately, and we could see that associations between varenicline and depression and anxiety conditions remain significant only for individuals with a pre-existing psychiatric diagnosis. I think up front it's worth highlighting um, some of the strengths and limitations of the paper. Um, strengths are that it's a large sample, nearly 70,000 people prescribe clean, and the other strength I think is the design that reduces within individual design that accounts to some extent for residual confound, confounds and also the big problem in these type of observational studies is confounding by indication, that is the population getting the medication is different to the population who's not getting the medication and therefore any differences in rates of adverse outcomes you see may just reflect the underlying risks um, of, these, of these outcomes. So there's strengths. There's also some limitations worth highlighting. Starting one country, Sweden, um, rates of smoking are a bit lower than the rest of Western Europe. Also, um, we underestimated the true rates of these outcomes because we're using registers to collect the information. And also, um, adherence may vary, and because we're looking at people collecting their prescriptions from pharmacies, we're not really able to look at the um, exact level of adherence to these meds. Um, nevertheless, um, you know, it's a step forward hopefully um, in understanding this adverse outcomes associated with uh, varenicline and um, corresponds with um, some information from randomised controlled trials looking at similar outcomes and they've also come to similar conclusions although based on smaller samples. I think there are two main findings worth highlighting. One is a series of negative findings. One, um, and they include the lack of an association with um, suicidal behaviours, lack of an association with um, psych most psychiatric conditions, particularly psychoses, and um, also a lack of association with transport accidents and traffic offences. Um, the other finding is that we did find a small uh, increased risk in people with um, pre-existing psychiatric disorders for mood and anxiety conditions. So, small increased risk in that group of people. And that may be explained by nicotine withdrawal. So, we did some further analysis to see if that would be one explanation. And compared to um, bupropion, there wasn't um, uh, an increased risk with the var varinicline. And that may be one explanation. And the other explanation is people who stop their varenicline may be stopping their other psychiatric medications as well, and hence that increases the risk of anxiety and mood disorders, albeit a very small increased risk. So there I think um, two of the, the main findings, one I think the predominant finding really is this lack of association, and it doesn't really support a causal role for very clean and a series of adverse outcomes which have been reported in um, post-surveillance marketing reports, case reports, um, and there is really no evidence for that based on our observational study, um, at least for suicidal behaviours, um, many psychiatric conditions including psychoses, um, criminality outcomes and transport um, accidents and traffic offences.